Sony just finished up its big PlayStation 5 showcase. Uh, after skipping E3 this year, we were kind of waiting for a larger show for them, uh, which will talk about games coming kind of in the near term, but also in the longer term. Uh, this was about an hour long uh, with a segment saved for the end for kind of interviews about some of the larger games. And they also sort of purposely stacked a lot of their biggest announcements into the final 10 minutes of production, including a lot of first party exclusives. Uh, up until that point, I was a little skeptical that this was going to be quite as um, hype inducing as some were indicating. And yet by the time we finished it, uh, I think they released a number of surprises on the level that most people weren't expecting, myself included. Uh, out of the show, I think you're going to obviously see a number of bigger games talked about. Uh, they did not save uh, one kind of key game for the end. That would be Knights of the Old Republic, which is getting a full remake uh, in part developed and, and uh, published by Sony. And that is the, the classic Star Wars RPG that uh, was originally made by Bioware, and they are going to kind of fully remake it for the modern day, uh, which is much, much more involved than a, a simple uh, remaster. And it's, it's going to be kind of a whole next level thing for them. Uh, they said that it is a console exclusive at launch. So it's unclear. It seems like that means it are probably also coming to PC, I think. But if you want to get on Xbox, it will probably not be there for at the very least six months to a year, if not more so, um, because if Sony's acting kind of directly in terms of getting this game remade, you know they're going to keep it uh, as long as they can. So I would probably expect a year of exclusivity for, for Sony on that. So I'm, I'm very curious to see more from that, even though they said it may be a while till we see more of it. Um, we got another big game for Gran Turismo uh, that is kind of expected. People were, were wanting to see that for a while now. Uh, and we only got a glimpse of something from Naughty Dog just very briefly, and that's just a uh, Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy remaster. We did not hear anything about the rumored Last of Us remake or the rumored Last of Us uh, Factions multiplayer standalone game they're doing. So kind of out of everybody, uh, Naughty Dog was kind of less present than uh, a lot of other studios within Sony. Um, one studio that was very present was Insomniac Games, and... This is where things started being pretty surprising. Uh, there were two games showcased from Insomniac. Uh, keep in mind, this is a studio that they did originally um, Spider-Man. They did work to uh, port the game to next gen for uh, a remaster. They released Spider-Man Miles Morales as a launch title. They released Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart uh, as a early um, 2021 game and theoretical potential game of the year contender. And then in this show, they showed off they are working on both uh, Spider-Man 2, uh, which includes Spider-Man and Miles Morales working together. They were hinting at a villain that might be Electro. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to see what the fan analysis is on that. And it's going to have Venom in it. Um, my guess is that Venom is going to be playable and not just an enemy we fight. That's just kind of the sense of, of where kind of Venom has been lately. He has his own movie where he's like the hero, essentially. So my guess is they will probably let us be Venom, but this was just a teaser, so we don't know that for sure. Uh, what was the biggest surprise to me was certainly the fact that they are also making a Wolverine game. Uh, we only got the barest of teasers there. Wolverine sitting at a bar. We don't see his face. We don't hear his voice, but he pops the claws out uh, and the crowd goes wild, or at least they would have if this was a live event. Uh, I certainly did. Um, it's kind of unclear what happened to manifest this. Uh, obviously, Spider-Man is, is a property directly owned by uh, Sony, which is why we see Sony exclusive Spider-Man games. And then they kind of contracted out to Disney for the movies. Wolverine was owned by Fox and then Disney acquired Fox and then are kind of they converted the X-Men rights over and they're going to be introducing them into the MCU later. So it's it seems like this is a uh, PlayStation exclusive game, but I, I need to kind of hunt down an answer to that if this is possibly a game that could come to other platforms, but given that it is Insomniac, my guess would be no. Um, this is exciting because of what Insomniac did with Spider-Man and how expertly they transitioned uh, him to his own solo game. Uh, if they can do something even remotely similar with Wolverine and how Wolverine plays and how that character comes across, that will be stellar. So I am deeply, deeply looking forward to that. And then we closed, as some predicted, <laughs> with God of War Ragnarok, which... Uh, looks very good. It does look like kind of more God of War, which is a good thing considering um, God of uh, the last God of War was what I would consider one of the games of the generation. Uh, it was that good. 
We are still in Norse mythology here. We know that Thor and Odin are going to be a part of the story. And we saw them briefly teased. Uh, Tyr, the god of war, is in this. The Norse god of war, the other one. Uh, and then Atreus, who we learned at the end of last game, spoilers, is Loki. So he's kind of in the mythology too. Um, and then Ragnarok, the actual apocalyptic event, is supposed to be happening during the course of this game. And uh, we don't have a release window for this, I don't think. I don't think they mentioned that at all. Uh, it was, they originally said 2021, which no one believed. Then it was pushed to 2022, and I don't think they said anything about a date or a date window this time. So presumably it would be holiday 2022, but if that got pushed into 2023, given the size and scope of that game, I would not be surprised. So we'll we'll see where things are for that. We did see a lot of gameplay from that. They have been working on it for a long time. So we, are, we saw a lot more from that game than we did some of the others. But between all of these... <laughs> This was a very strong show for Sony. Uh, Sony has continued to show that they are uh, really, really hammering out these high quality first party games. Uh, and all of this is not even mentioning one that is coming out in a couple months here, Horizon Forbidden West, which was delayed out of the holiday window, but is still coming out and still looks very good. Uh, they talked about that briefly in the kind of interview after show. But um, Sony is kind of firing all, on all cylinders right now in terms of first party software. Uh, Microsoft has been buying up studios in an effort to compete with this. Uh, and it remains to be seen like kind of what the end result of that is going to be. A lot of the games you see here are kind of built on a proven legacy of like, oh, well, this company, you know, this this studio's last three, four, five, six games were good. So we assume the next one is going to be good. Uh, so they have that going for them. And so it's, it's easier to kind of get hyped for all of these games, uh, given that kind of pedigree that they come from. And I would not say that anyone could really walk away from this disappointed. I guess we'll hear more from Naughty Dog specifically in the future. Um, and uh, Sucker Punch did not have anything with like Ghost of Tsushima sequel, and yet they just released a full expansion for that game. So I'll give them a break there. But anyway, this was a really fantastic show. I thought they did a great job, and I like this format as well with all the trailers and kind of the interviews at the end. So I think this is about all anyone could have wanted from a Sony show, and uh, they did manage to surprise me in a few different ways, which I really appreciated. And uh, we'll see what the, the fall holds, which will be a little empty for Sony, but it is very clear the next year or two are going to produce a lot of great titles for them.